Now this one is a special dedicator to the bicycle man, the man. Especially to a man, seven man gang. Easy Papa and the van. Loveliness, you're the dear Michael. Loveliness, bicycle man. Welcome to Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM, bikewasho.org in Reno. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder and we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. I'm Kai Plaskon. Ride on. Today we have artists and politicians, odd bedfellows for sure, but uh, bikes bring us all together, right? Uh, we're going to chat with Pan Pantoja, who raps on a brew bike. We're also going to hear from Emily Rass, who built an outhouse on a bike. Um, we're going to chat with an author who wrote about a black community in northern Nevada and the role of bikes in that community. Uh, then we'll hear from conservative mayor uh, of Sparks, Ed Lawson. Uh, he's on the RTC board, that's a regional transportation commission, which is in charge of building safe bike infrastructure. And that board has been controlled by the by conservatives for nearly 20 years. Recently, Ed started riding a bike, and it's changed his perspective. We're also going to chat with uh, County Commissioner Alexis Hill. She is taking her bike life to the next level. She recently started commuting by bike to the county commission offices, and it's changed her life. Before we get to that, bike news. In France, you can ride a bike after you die. A funeral home has created uh, the Corps Bicyclette, uh, which is a coffin on a bike that they ride you in uh, after you've died for the procession. Uh, the creator of this hearse-like bike says it's quieter and less polluting than a hearse driven by fossil fuels. Apparently, all the cars driving to funerals and then the cremation of 55 million bodies on Earth a year is kind of bad for the environment. In Warwickshire, England, they built an image of a bike using 252 bales of hay. It is this huge image of a bike that you can only see from the sky. Why did they do that? Well, to celebrate a bike ride, of course. It was so popular, it even made the news when they recycled the bike made out of hay. What did they do? They fed it to cows. The European Commission has announced an education program for mountain bike trail building certification. It's in response to a lack of skilled trail builders. The program is set to launch in 2025. In Berlin, they tried pop-up bike lanes. That means they just put up a bike lane all of a sudden with uh, cones. And then they surveyed people about what they thought about those bike lanes. 95% of cyclists said, yay, they liked them. Only 15% of drivers liked them. But surprisingly, 75% of walkers and public transit users also liked the pop-up bike lanes. Forbes is reporting that commuting by bike just one day a week can reduce your carbon emissions by nearly 30%. The authors of the study say statistics like that make reversing climate change seem achievable with small changes in our everyday lives. In the future, bikes will be so complex that only information technology people will be able to fix them. That's according to a new article in Outside Magazine. Even gears will be controlled by electronics, the magazine reports. Micromobility injuries are up 172% nationwide in the past four years. That's according to the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Crashes, crashes with cars were the leading cause of death. There was a drive-by bike shooting in New York City. The bicyclist was on his way to shoot someone. He had rubber gloves on and everything to protect his identity. And as he was on his way to go shoot somebody, a driver pulled up with a gun and instead shot the bicyclist before the bicyclist could go shoot somebody else. Only in America. On the funner side, there's a naked bike ride in Madison, Wisconsin, and that's one of the reasons why it's the second most bike-friendly city in America. Well, that's according to People for Bikes. Yes, there are other reasons too, but they are boring reasons, like protected bike lanes and stuff. Incidentally, there is a naked bike ride in Portland too, and I thought about starting a naked bike ride in Reno, but my friends didn't want to see me naked, and they said it was a bad idea, Kai. 
This is KWNK 97.7 FM in local bike news from bikewasho.org. The UNR Faculty Senate, representing approximately 2,200 academic and administrative faculty, has passed a resolution in support of bicycling and micromobility infrastructure. They're considering ways to let local leaders know that they support safety and that local leaders should support safety too. The city of Reno has ordered a stop sign beacon for the intersection of 6th and Evans Street. Why? Well, because drivers keep running this stop sign and that's putting bike riders in a lot of danger. As a result of complaints from the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance, the city has trimmed the trees so that people can see the stop sign too. There is a lot going on in Lake Tahoe in terms of bikes. They have a bike kitchen now. That means they refurbish old bikes and they donate them. Every donated bike comes with a helmet, a lock, and a bike light. The Lake Tahoe Bicycle Coalition ran a bike valet this summer. They did it at nine events and parked 1,500 bikes. Also up at the lake, there is a new one-mile protected bike path from the Y to Myers, and Lake Tahoe Keys got a bike path too. Down the hill from Tahoe and Truckee, the town has narrowed some streets and installed bike lane buffers to slow down car traffic and make roads safer for everybody. Go Truckee and Lake Tahoe. Back here in Reno, the Regional Transportation Commission plans a protected shared use path around almost the entire McCarran Corridor. There is one section that is buffered on this, on, on the 26 mile uh, McCarran um, loop. And so there's just this one section that's buffered on the southwest side where speeds are really high because there's, um, there's people climbing up and uh, going down steep grades. Federal standards state that because of the speeds, there should be a protected path there too. And you can ask the RTC to follow federal standards in this development and install a shared use path on the southwest side of McCarran. Just go to bikewasho.org, or Bike Washo Facebook page, excuse me, and uh, then you can learn how, how you can advocate for that. Reno is getting lit in December with a lights festival, parties, and a bike ride. Pineapple Pedicabs, the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance, and Bike Night Reno are teaming up for Let It Glow. Uh, go to letitglowreno.com for details, and you can also follow Bike Night Reno on Instagram for the bike ride details. Finally, the Dutch Cycling Embassy report on Reno is now available and uploaded to the bikewasho.org website. It's a guide for how to create a city where people aren't terrified to be on bikes and, in fact, enjoy riding and don't feel stressed out. Wow. Bike News on KWNK is produced by Bike Life Radio the first Sunday of every month at noon right here on KWNK 97.7 FM. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. I got to admit, this episode of Bike Life Radio is kind of random. We have politicians, artists, and black historians. Let's start out with Nevada author Helen Townsend talking about a little-known community of Black Springs, Nevada a long time ago. And she talks about it in her book, A Cry for Help. All right. You're listening to 97.7 FM, uh, KWNK Bike Life Radio, and we are at the Literature Crawl. Uh, and we're talking to Helen, who is the author of what? A Cry for Help. Uh, a Cry for Help. And, and what is that about? It's about the growth of a small community back in the day called Black Springs, Nevada, and all the turmoil and all the problems that they came up against just to have what every other community had, which was basically uh, water, sewage, roads. Uh, electricity and uh, the, the majority of their time was spent with always getting a note from the county commissioners to get help to do this. Huh. And, and bikes played a role in that community didn't they? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> why is that funny to us? I don't know why. I don't but. know why either. <laughs> I don't know why either but yeah they did play a role in it. <laughs> uh, yeah. so, in, how, did, how did bikes play a role would you say? Uh, my brothers, they had my. They always had these little stingrays. I don't know if you remember a stingray no, bike. No. Well, they were like miniature bikes back in the day. Maybe it was called a stingray. Okay. What I rode, it had a banana seat on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. So yeah. I rode a stingray. That's a lot better. I called them a stingray back then. That's a cool. But there was big potholes in the road.
road because it was dirt roads. And my brothers made games out of it. And all the other neighborhoods made games. I mean, all the other residents' kids made games out of it. They would go all the way up to the road, ride down really fast, hit the pop hole, and pothole, and then jump up. And that was fun to them. Of course, some of them did get hurt. Some of them did fall. But they get yeah. right back up and do it again. Yeah, use yeah. a yeah. pothole to make a jump. To make That's a, a jump. great idea. Yeah. That's a good jump. Neat. Hey, kids yeah. will figure things out. You know how to have fun and what to do, whereas grown-ups may not. But kids always find a way to have fun, and that's what we did. So, was that part of not having parks or something? Yes, we didn't have anything out there. We just had big open space, and that was it. And so we did a lot of uh, discovering while we, you know, lived there. Um, one of the places we discovered, like I said, is the tunnel. And the tunnel was probably about five hills back, and it was tall enough for us to stand in and walk in and run in. At the very end of the tunnel was all this sand. We would start running from the beginning, run all the way down and jump in the sand, and that was, we'd spend the whole day out at the tunnel. You're away from your parents, you're not under supervision. <laughs> you know, you can do all kinds of things out there. <laughs> run through the tunnel and jump in the sand. Jump in the sand, we wrote a lot of things on the walls. I mean, we would spend a whole day out there and we would enjoy ourselves. It was just another part of us creating something fun for us to do. Because, you know, as far away as it was from town, you couldn't get out of town, I mean, out of there unless your parents drove you somewhere. You really had to make your own fun. And we were known for doing that. Uh, Helen uh, Townsend Parker, right? Yeah, excellent. And uh, A Cry for Help is the name of your book. Is the name of my book, A Cry for Help. Next, we have the mayor of Sparks, a conservative who recently started riding a bike. Here's Ed. It'll be, it'll be a fun interview. It won't be serious. Right. Is, that, is that all right? Well, really Can you do that? I'll try. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that fun. <laughs> uh, so we're talking to Ed Lawson, uh, mayor of Sparks. Um, this is uh, Bike Life Radio, 97.7 FM. Uh, and uh, you ride a bike, don't you? I do. You, I, you mentioned it. Yep, I ride. Uh, my doctor said I got to get some exercise, so I got an electric bike because uh -huh. he didn't say I had to get a lot of exercise. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, but I love it. What, what kind of electric bike? Uh, it's a Heoki, and it's uh, just a great electric bike. It's uh, like a mountain bike looking thing, so you can go on dirt or uh, on the road. Uh, and when did you get it? Oh, it's been probably a year and a half. Uh -huh. huh. During the pandemic? Uh huh, during the pandemic. And so, uh, what do you think? I love it. Um, it really uh, opened my eyes to the lack of uh, ways and places we can ride bikes. Oh, and, and so what did you, uh, like give me an example, you were riding your bike and then something happened. So we were, uh, myself and uh, Councilman Abbott uh, like to ride along the river because check on the homeless populations and make sure that you know we're keeping our end of the river clean and the best way to do that is on a bicycle and we ride all the way up into Reno and have lunch up there and then ride back on 4th Street. Um, when you're going across McCarran, over the bridge, over the railroad track, underneath I-80, uh, you're within a foot and a half of semi-trucks that are driving right next to you. And as I said in my uh, talk earlier this morning, I wouldn't take my kids on that for fear that they just weave in the little, least little bit and uh, I lose a kid. So we need to find better ways to access the river for the city of Sparks. So one of the interesting things about that that we think about is um, like, there's a couple of different ways to go. There's either make the road safer for people on bikes and your kids, or there's like, don't make it safe so they don't come out here, you know, and then, and then it'll be safe because they're not here, right? So which is it? Well, I think we're, it's got to be separated. I mean, what we're seeing great success in is the complete street where you're separating pedestrians, bicycles, and cars. And it's a physical barrier that separates them. Uh, Audi will be, uh, that will be a complete street running into Reno. So that connectivity there where you could actually ride your bicycle from Sparks to Reno in a safe manner and not have to worry about getting hit, I think is a big deal. Um, but you also there's other parts of the city we want to be able to access that we don't have that right now. So we're looking at that type of how do, how do we connect uh, as, as I'm, what I'm proposing is city centers where we have a denser population in downtown Sparks on Audi will be denser and then obviously along the river. 
and then how do we connect those with public transportation and bicycle and pedestrians so we're looking at all those plans we actually are talking about a tunnel right now and investigating the feasibility of how to get uh, past the railroad tracks in i-80 but we'll like see a pedestrian tunnel or something correct. like that right? correct yeah so there's some good and bad to that i mean the good is that you do have that connectivity the bad is that becomes a place a hiding place for the lesser elements uh-huh. as we want to say but uh you know it, there's we're just trying to explore a lot of different ways because it's really come to my attention because you know i hadn't really ridden a bicycle since my kids were young and uh you know here i'm in my 60 years old and i decided to start riding a bicycle again and and i'm finding some shortcomings yeah were there was there a time that you know you were like well this audi idea is dumb or, or something like that, you know, like it's nobody's riding and or and then you've kind of come around or something? Or no, I've always been a proponent of that because um, I'll tell you what I hear from the residents is they're looking forward to it so they don't have to get in their cars. So they can actually get on their bike, go down and do some shopping and then go home. And I, I think that access for them, you don't have to worry about parking, you're helping the air out. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to it. You get some exercise. I mean, all these things that go along with riding a bike. Uh, as I talked about earlier, I went to cool school at uh, Colorado State. And Fort Collins has an immense bike path. I mean, they're, they're the entire city, you can get anywhere you want to in Fort Collins via bicycle. And that's something I think we should strive for in the city of Sparks. Yeah, uh, we were talking about the uh, Audi cycle track. So it's a raised track. It's protected in some way or another for those. Mm -hmm. uh, And and it's supposed to be done pretty soon, I think, next year or something like that. And so you're excited about that. Is that a place you'll take your kids? Well, my kids are 36 and 33, so <laughs> so will they take you there? They might they might wheel me in my wheelchair through there. Yes, but yeah, no, we'll we'll use it because there are some businesses down there that we like. Me and my wife like to go to uh, some restaurants and whatnot. So, and we like to get out on our bicycles. We we ride down here, but we take all the back roads, you know, and then walk our bikes across Pyramid so that we can be safe. But it it, it would be easier if we had the bike path set set apart there. Yeah, kind of a new concept that we've come up with at the at the Bike Alliance is uh, looking at the percentage of people in an area that have cars or don't, and what percentage of the roadway right of way is dedicated. So, like, let's say if we're at Audi Wells, it might be, uh, or let's say Spanish Springs, 100% of the population have access to a car and have cars. And so 100% of the roadway space, maybe 5% could be dedicated to pedestrians and 95% to, to people with cars. But if you go over to Audi and there's like 60% don't have cars and 40% do, then um, that's like a, a new kind of concept that we've been pitching out there. What do, you, what do you think of that idea of looking at our roadway space in terms of how it serves the community that the road is in? Does that make sense? Yep, it's actually uh, what we've been looking at in the city center idea. So having downtown Sparks as a city center, you're able to ride your bicycle from the neighborhoods over here. But then you want to go to Audi, let's say, and go to a restaurant there or a, a craft show or whatever's happening there on Audi in, the, in that uh, district, the Hispanic-oriented district that you we're going to connect 15th street which is where the bus terminal is that goes right past uh, sparks high school and then hits audi boulevard then you just jump on the already complete street there so it accomplishes several things one is i'm connecting the downtown to audi but i'm also providing safe travel for those high school students that are still riding a bicycle to uh, school or that then that gives them the option to ride a bicycle to school so it's uh you know we're just looking at different ways to if you build it they will come kind of a thing that's not always true uh, but it has to be in the right place and I, i think 15th street for us is a big deal i think that one will work This is Bike Life Radio from bikewasho.org. You're listening to Ed Lawson, Mayor of Sparks. We're going to be back in a minute. Are you tired of being serious on your bicycle? Let's take a bicycle fun break with Bike Life Radio. Yeah, so when you said you don't ride a bike, that's not true. You do. That's true. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, we found out the truth about you. <laughs> You're a closet bike rider. That's right. <laughs> well, that's awesome that 
This Bicycle Fun Break is brought to you by Bike Life Radio the first Sunday of every month at noon right here on KWink 97.7 FM. back on Bike Life Radio from KWNK with our interview with Sparks Mayor Ed Lawson. One of the things that you brought up when we were talking is the, the uh, kind of the public reaction to some of these things, and it's not always positive, right? So if we're talking about like a speed table, which is a new word that I learned today, it's like a kind of a long speed bump uh, that causes people to slow down uh, as they enter into a pedestrian area. Um, and and you were thinking that if you put one of those in an inappropriate area, what kind of what kind of response might you get? We're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of response because we are still not a bicycle community. When we become you know, and there's that that point of the tip over point, we haven't gotten anywhere close to it yet. So you put a speed hump. In essence, that's what it is a speed hump, but it, it's it's delineated for the pedestrian crosswalk, so it makes you slow down. Um, you know, the first time somebody uh, drives over at that speed and, you know, the front end of their car falls off, those are the complaints I get. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, even putting a, a speed hump in uh, certain areas where we know we need them uh, are, it causes great consternation with the neighbors. So it, it's we still have that NIMBY, that not-in-my-backyard thing that goes on. You know, I'm here now, so we can close the doors. No one else can come. You know, that's never going to happen. Yeah. So we, we have to balance these things out and and choose our battles where it does the most good yeah and then there's also like an uh, uh an educational period right so somebody might have their bumper fall off and then they're like oh maybe i shouldn't go so fast and i mean is that the kind of reaction like i shouldn't have to slow down or you know what kinds of things do you hear as an rtc you're the are you the chair i'm the chair yeah. i'm the chair you know, I, I hear more as the mayor. I mean, obviously, uh, the, when I go to the grocery store, it's always an adventure for me. Is I get stopped at least once or maybe twice, you know. And I love doing it because I love just, you know, you have a perception in your own mind, but I have the, per, you know, I can understand your perception, but I have the reasons behind it. I know why we do it that particular way. And uh, so that that's an education process for everybody. And, you know, as we look at different things like uh, more bike paths, and, and it's going to be inconvenient for uh, some car drivers, but it's going to be safer for pedestrians and bicycles, which is the ultimate goal. And safer for the drivers themselves if they have to slow down a little bit too, right? It, well, it certainly doesn't hurt to go a little bit slower, and uh, that is part of our problem. Uh, you know, it's the speed, and uh, we were just talking with NDOT that uh, speed and impairment are the two by far the largest causes of crashes in Nevada. So anything we can do to prevent those, I'm in favor of. Yeah. Uh, have you thought about um, uh, scooters at all? Is that something that you want to talk about or not really? We, it's okay uh, if you don't. You know. We're not going to do scooters in yeah. Sparks. Yeah. No. Never? Ever? I, I don't see that happening for us. Uh, I, I know Reno likes them, and, and, I, and, I, and I think and I commend them for what they did on the bicycle uh, what they, you know, is the, the restriping, and yeah, yeah, because I was in Denver uh, last uh, Thanksgiving, and Denver downtown Denver has done the same thing. It's parking is is more moved out in the street, and bicycles ride between the sidewalk and the parking, and it makes it a lot safer and it makes it easier to get around. Um, but it just doesn't look good. It's it's kind of ugly. I mean, if you really think about it, and what we do yeah, well, it with it depends on your perspective. I look at it and I go, "This is beautiful. Yeah. I feel safe," and and that's a beautiful thing to feel safe. Uh, and so, <laughs> you know, I, I I agree with you there that it could be prettier if we had planter boxes that were like a foot wide, which they have in some cities, and so you can put a planter box there and make it prettier. Um, but uh, 
you're right, the, the street doesn't look as wide and that causes people to even have to slow down more because their vision is restricted. And it's kind of weird to look at a bike lane as, hey, this is also an easy place for me to stick my door out when I park, you know, and get out safely. Um, and then the bike lane becomes something that's used by drivers. And uh, so there's like all kinds of perspectives that you have to try and balance, I guess, all the time, right? When you get stopped in the grocery store and somebody's pissed off about a speed bump or not getting to park next to the curb, then you got to explain, well, here's what Kai told me, you know, <laughs> like he thinks it's beautiful, you know. And there is, and like I said, everybody has a perspective and you try and take in everyone's perspective and make the best choice. I mean, I mean, uh, I'm not the smartest guy in the room and never have been and never will be. But I take people's perspectives in and use some common sense to make decisions that I think benefit everyone. Excellent. Um, and so in terms of the impairment uh, element, uh, the uh, that was one question that I didn't ask during the panel because I wasn't really sure. But I was thinking that, that somehow scooters would be better than people getting in their cars and being impaired um, but it's like a really touchy issue you know if you're if you're impaired on a bicycle yeah. it's a DUI uh -huh. so it doesn't matter if you're on a scooter bicycle or in your car it's all the same offense yeah, Reno Police Department had a story uh, last in the summer saying that it was okay to be impaired on a scooter and uh, <laughs> and and so they're on record as saying it's okay you can't be reckless so uh, but I don't know. Maybe maybe Sparks has different rules or laws or something like that. I, you know, I couldn't comment on what Reno does for sure. I just know in Sparks, it's you're impaired, no matter what vehicle you're in. That's a DUI. What do you think is your biggest concern about scooters? Would you say in Sparks? Uh, for me, it's where they're left, a lot of it, and then um, this areas that they're allowed to go. Um, we specifically put an ordinance in that we have no electric vehicles around the marina. Um, we have to revisit that because we didn't th see the popularity of people with electric bicycles, that personal use electric bicycles that uh, are probably more conscientious of their neighbors because they actually live there. Or if you're on a scooter, you know, you're probably visiting from somewhere and, and you're just trying to get around as fast as you can and, and you don't know the person that you may uh, run into or pass and yeah. You know, so it's more anonymous. Um, I think, you know, when you have your own electric vehicle or electric bicycle or scooter, you're, you're more conscious that you're uh, your neighbors. Yeah. That these are actually people that live in my city. Speaking of which, uh, you know, getting an electric bike and riding it now, uh, do you find yourself like, uh, you know, you went and you rode around the marina and then you're like, oh my God, I'm breaking the law. <laughs> or like, I'm going too fast. I am going over 25. Or, you know, do you find yourself, because the roads aren't built for people on bikes, that you find yourself breaking law sometimes inadvertently? Well, I did break the law once around the marina and uh -huh. I did ride my bicycle <laughs> on there. <laughs> But I didn't get to fun. use Why I didn't get to time? use the electric part of it because oh. there's so many people. Oh. There's the safety aspect of it. You know, you weren't allowed to really go fast um, for fear that those I mean, people and their dogs and their kids and stuff. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't want anyone getting hurt on my behalf. But uh, I've not gone back since then. And what I found is um, I'm trying to find different places to ride to from my neighborhood, and I rode Pyramid Highway. And, you know, that's a pretty nice wide there. I mean, it's width of a car, basically, on that side. But there's a lot of uh, road trash along there. So you worry about having a flat tire and maybe being five or six or seven miles from home. Um, I've ridden my bike from my house out to Golden Eagle Recreation Park, which is about a 20-mile round trip from my house. So, I mean, it, and there's, it was easy to get out there because there is sidewalks, which technically is breaking the law again because uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you're not allowed to ride your bicycle on a sidewalk if you're over 12 years old. But, you know, it's a wide sidewalk and it's not a lot of traffic. But there is a bike lane along Vista that allows you to go along. But once again, it's a very narrow, you know, three or four foot wide. So you've got cars zooming past you at... 40, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. You know, that's a speedway out there. Yeah. Weird. Uh, one of the, you really know the law. That's impressive. I didn't know that a 12, some 13 year old wasn't supposed to be on there or an adult or whatever wasn't supposed to be on the sidewalk. Um, 
One of the things that Incline is having some issues with is the same thing as, as the Sparks Marina, that there's the path that goes from uh, Flume Tunnel out to uh, Sand, Sand Harbor, Harbor and, the, and the people the up there. Trail. It's an incredible trail, and they're... Uh, but the managers up there are like, oh my God, there's all this conflict. And I'm wondering if, uh, you know, being the chair of RTC, do you see this period as unprecedented in terms of different comp competing road traffic or has it always been like this? Well, when you build up something new like that trail, we've never had that before. So you didn't really have an ability to park and walk along that area. Uh, you had to drive your car. So we've, we've created uh, an unintended consequence, as it were, because, yeah, w I could ride my bicycle on there and uh, get there faster, but i got to take into consideration the pedestrians. I mean, one of the things we did at the marina is we actually put a yellow stripe down the, on the path so that you uh -huh. knew which side you were supposed to be on. <laughs> There's solutions. Yeah, there is, but, I mean, maybe for that part of it, maybe we dedicated a piece of it just for bicycles. You know, well, this is a bike lane, and then you have two pedestrian lanes. So, I mean, there's there's solutions that can happen there. We just we need to figure out what works for everyone, and 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 keep in mind that it is for everyone. It's not just for bikes. It's not just for pedestrians. So it's for everyone. And I guess that's an interesting perspective too, from the the perspective of a decision maker. Is somebody might come and say, "Hey, put a bike lane over here, or put a widen the sidewalk," and then you're may be reluctant because you don't know what kind of problems might come out of that until it actually happens and then you're like oh my god i didn't expect that to happen and right yeah we're continually is what i call looking for the tiger traps is it sounds like it's a really good idea until you fall into a tiger trap so we we want to we want to know what the unintended consequences are up front and that's where you get a group of folks together and we're pretty good at doing that and it's like okay you're the positive i'm the negative think of all the negatives and positives you can think of it and let's see uh, where we land on this and and then in in those cases where you're not sure or you're breaching new ground that it works very well so uh, bicycles and uh, lanes and bike lanes and all this is is fairly new uh, it's something that we are going to incorporate into our, our arterial roads so that we can keep that separation between the faster traffic uh, along an arterial and the pedestrians and bicycles so everything we look at for the future will have some type of uh, bicycle or pedestrian separation. Excellent. Ed Lawson, uh, chairman of the RTC and mayor of Sparks. Thank you for being on Bike Life Radio. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Mayor Lawson is one of the board members on the Regional Transportation Commission. It's a very powerful board that has uh, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, and it determines where bike facilities should be and how safe they will be. This board is not an elected board, it's an appointed board. So each jurisdiction appoints people, so like the mayor of Sparks and all the city council people, they pick one of their own members to be on the Regional Transportation Commission. Uh, and the city of Sparks does the same thing, and Washoe County does the same thing, and then representatives, elected representatives from each of those jurisdictions go and be on the Regional Transportation Commission board, and then they decide what, uh, how our roads should be and how safe they should be for, for cyclists. Now, the RTC board, for some reason, even though many of the other boards and, and elected officials in town have been uh, liberals, the RTC board has been controlled by conservatives for more than 18 years. This month, for the first time, a majority of Democrats will control that board. So there could be big changes on the horizon in terms of bike safety. County Commissioner Alexis Hill is a daily bike commuter and was lobbying to be on the board. She's now one of the newest members along with Reno City Councilman Devin Reese and Mayor Hillary Sheevey. They make up that new liberal majority of the board. We do have a story in This Is Reno about the impact of the uh, 18 years of conservative leadership on bike lanes and on the RTC and on, on bus ridership. Uh, so you can read that in This Is Reno. But here's Commissioner Alexis Hill. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking to Alexis Hill. She's county commissioner and uh, you would like to be on the RTC, right? I, yes, I mean, it's that a was a long time dream. Yes, it was a dream. You're totally right. You know, I got into this politics 
game pretty much uh, from being a young kid walking to school without sidewalks. I knew that was wrong and I've, I've been advocating for public safety ever since then. I started as a planner at the city of Sparks and wanted to get that sidewalk fixed. So yes, it's, um, I'm very excited for that. get the sidewalk fixed? Yes, there's you like, did. there, there what? is actually, and it's because we at, at the city of Sparks required a developer to finish the sidewalk. <sighs> um, and so you can walk up Vista safely um, from my parents' neighborhood and get to um, Mendive Middle School. What was that like then? walking without a sidewalk scary yes and annoying because you had to walk through rocks and when it was snowy um and i'd wear um, no joke a, i think it's called a ball clava with like uh-huh. a face mask because yeah. my parents were like we're not driving you to school uh and <laughs> you know just so, so like you looked like you were on your way to rob somebody yeah honestly yeah. i mean <laughs> as a middle schooler for sure uh <laughs> so yes i mean it it made me feel like lame as well i i was like i'm not cool because i'm like walking through rocks and you know i so i think it just it it demeans a person if there's not a place for them on the roadway yeah um so what would you do if you were on the rtc then uh Make I, everybody wear balaclavas. <laughs> exactly. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, I ran on um, better public transportation um, and public safety. Um, and so uh, as the chair of the Tahoe Transportation District, we are making serious investments in public transportation around the lake and working with the state of Nevada and California and all the counties where we are upping our commitment to public transportation. Um, we are even doing um, micro transit, which are vans that you can just call up like you would an Uber for free and get around all the North Lake. So I think that there there are opportunities for local government to invest in those type of projects. And then um, I think that RTC is doing a really good job of going back through and making um, uh, better uh, infrastructure um, uh, investments on roadways that need uh, bike lanes and sidewalks and I just want to continue to push that and see how we can move people from their vehicles to to their walking and you know riding their bikes make them safe speaking of uh, which you uh, have started riding more to work right yeah why well I'm so spoiled um, I won a Timba uh, raffle last year and won an e-bike so i ride my e-bike to washoe county the washoe county complex i ride it to uh, the co-op i ride it to the grocery store Um, i ride it to you know meet friends in midtown Um, and so um, and then my husband and i just ride regular bikes as well but it is it's been a game changer for me especially with the gas prices that have been um i I can't believe that I'm able just to get to work essentially for free, except for the, you know, the very small energy charge to, you know, get that battery charged up every day. What do you do with all your extra money now? Oh, I find a way to spend it. Don't worry. I mean, <laughs> uh, the, I'm sure there. I mean, I have a daughter and she's uh-huh. 10 months. And uh-huh. so, so you bought her a bike. I'm buying all the things for her. <laughs> yes. She's a very well accessorized baby. Don't worry. Excellent. Um, and so having this e-bike now and riding to work on a regular basis, have there been some things that you've learned or, or has it changed your perspective at all? Or was you just kind of always knew because you've been a, uh, a transportation guru anyway? Well, I used to ride a real bike bike to uh, the city of Reno when I worked there. And so um, I was very familiar with where roads were unsafe or safe. You know, I'll never ride my bike on Liberty regardless of if I'm on an e-bike or a bike bike because it's just incredibly unsafe. Um, and so I know the roads where I, I want to make sure that, you know, I will stay off of. But what's so exciting is that the city of Reno has invested in um, I, I don't know what it's called, but these bike lanes that they're separating with um, barricades uh, yes. and candlesticks and things. Thank like you. That. Yeah. Yes. And so my whole ride, I'm either in a bike lane or in a protected bike lane to get to Washoe County Complex. So it's been amazing. I feel so much safer. I will tell you, you know, uh, you're very aware that no one sees you. And so I ride very defensively, especially since I had my daughter. I used to be kind of crazier with my bike riding and now I'm very defensive and I slower and I like use the bell and I'm like hey you know yelling uh-huh. at people uh because you know I just want to make sure like see me like Wait, so you're saying the protected bike lane made you a safer rider 
It did. It, wow. I mean, and it makes me feel like, uh, I, I don't know, like I'm going to be safe on the way to work. So I don't hesitate to ride. You're listening to Bike Life Radio on KWNK 97.7 FM. That is Commissioner Alexis Hill talking about how a bike has changed her life. We're going to be right back. Are you tired of being serious on your bicycle? Let's take a bicycle fun break with Bike Life Radio. For me, I'm super, super tough, you know? I have like brass balls, I'm super cool. I'm not scared of anything. But I think, yeah, to make biking more accessible, more accessible, you gotta have protected bike lanes or, or, you know, even just put them behind the, the parked cars, all the sorts of stuff, you know? That's it for your bicycle fun break from Bike Life Radio. Find us on Spotify for a whole hour of fun. Charges of $60 per minute may apply. Where do you think we can make some improvements? You talked about protected lanes. Is that what we need to do, or what do you what do you think we need to do in in Washoe County um, that you know would be a, a, a good change? All of the above, and I specifically uh, represent uh, unincorporated Washoe County as far as like roadways that I have a, uh, effect on today. Um, not being on the RTC. Um, roadways in Verdi and Mogul because they're unincorporated and roadways in Incline Village and Crystal Bay um, that are in the unincorporated Washoe County. The rest of my district is in uh, Reno proper. So the city of Reno would do all of those uh, improvements. But uh, in, in Incline Village and Crystal Bay, we're making some uh, serious um, investments on um, public safety. So how can we separate pedestrians and even cyclists? Because we even have cyclists and e-bike riders on our trails. And it's because our roads aren't safe. Our roads are, there's nowhere for them to be on our roads. So we're looking at recommendations for separating that traffic. Um, and then I think I want to do a study next year in Verdi and Mogul because so many cyclists Cyclists go out there for ple- pleasure rides, and there is no bike lanes. Um, and there's a town center in Verdi, but people just drive so fast through there. So how can we slow down that traffic and make sure that that t- little town center gets more business? Because that we know that you know when people drive slower and when when they're they feel like they can walk safer and they can ride their bikes, then your actually your investments and your businesses improve. So it it has a direct correlation to the economy. So I think that there's opportunities um, as well in that area. Yeah, eliminate the I'm gonna die feeling when you're not in a car right yeah that would be great I think we can do that and we live in such a beautiful area and people want to explore and they want to do it outside of a vehicle I'm you know reasonably I think that you do need a vehicle to get around in this community right now hopefully with you know uh, great policy decisions of my coworkers and I throughout the um, uh, community. We can, you know, ensure that maybe you don't need to ride a car as much, but right now you need to drive. Um, but you also should have the option to feel safe by riding your bike or walking in your community. Uh, I, I rode today and it was kind of cold. Uh, have you been riding since it got oh colder? Did you stop? No, I rode on Tuesday when we were supposed to have that interview uh-huh. uh, at my board uh, meeting. <laughs> and it was cold. And it <laughs> was freezing, and I totally was not prepared. I was wearing a dress and no uh, gloves. Oh no. Yeah, and I like was like, by the time I got to the county complex, I'm like shaking. <laughs> That's but, why you were so mad at me for missing it. No, You're like, I, I was it. not. I was not. Uh, it's but, okay. You could say it. Um, no, I'm very chill. I'm the chillest <laughs> yes. ever. Um, um, so yes, uh, I have been experiencing that lately. But I have great gloves, and uh-huh. I mean, living in Nevada, you have yeah. to have like a million layers. So uh-huh. I just need to remember to wear them. Yeah. So uh, that's something that you've learned is uh, to be prepared now. That's like a kind of well, a new kind thing for of. You. I mean, I'm not great at looking at the weather, so uh-huh. sometimes you just end up being cold. But it's fine. Like you can get inside and warm up. You uh-huh. know. So. All right. Good. Mm-hmm. Anything you'd like to add about bike or pedestrian safety in our community? Uh, I don't think so. I do want to make a pitch for people to look at e-bikes um, if they don't have one currently. It is such uh, a reasonably 
reasonable investment, I think. They seem like a lot of money. I probably wouldn't have purchased one until I w- was so fortunate to win the raffle. But now I want to purchase one for my husband. And I feel like uh, they're a game changer. And I think that we're going to have a lot more people out on the roads. And when you do that, you push policymakers like me to make sure you're safe while you're out on the road. It's not just like the onesie, twosie cyclists. It's uh, the whole community is exploring, you know, that type of uh, transportation. Yeah. Uh, You know, one of the things I I talked to Bill Thomas a long time ago, like years ago, and he was saying, we can't have a bike lane going up 7th Avenue because it's uphill and people won't ride their bikes up there. And then as over the past year, more and more people on their e-bikes and scooters, I'm thinking that is totally reasonable that and and things change fast, don't they? They do. I feel it. Riding. I'm like, there are more e-bike people out here and I when driving I see more of them and so it makes me excited because the, that's the momentum we need to make sure that we're making the investments to keep people safe and to say like no that look at this how many people are actually out on the roads um, using alternative modes of transportation and you were pushing that when I just got on the bo- board you had pushed you called it micro mobility right I hadn't even know I didn't even know yeah, that term I didn't know what it was yeah yeah but I it's like what it was and I, I'm gonna say this all the time it, Exactly, because it's scooters, it's bicycles, Uh it's e-bikes, it's, it's, yeah, Yeah. it's all the things. And so I think people, you know, are realizing that there's a lot of ways they can get from point A to point B. Excellent. All right, Alexis Hill, uh, county commissioner, and she's vying for being on the RTC. Yes, Uh, trying to make changes up in Incline Village, right? Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. You're listening to Bike Life Radio, 97.7 FM on KWNK. When will it run? Uh, I think this uh, Sunday. That was Commissioner Alexis Hill. This is Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM, uh, owned and operated by the nonprofit Reno Bike Project on Grove Street. If you have a bike repair need, go see Steve. Actually, uh, I don't know if they have anybody at the Reno Bike Project named Steve. Uh, But uh, it rhymes with need, so that's why I use that name. Uh, Speaking of rhyming, we hit the brew bike in Reno during the literature crawl over the summer. Uh, Artist Pan Pantoja was on the brew bike entertaining guests. Here he is. It's Pan Pantoja here Uh, on uh, the brew bike. I've never been on a brew bike before. We're going to give him a second to think uh, because we've caught him off guard, which is really hard to do. And uh, the Pan Pantoja... uh, is a local poet, uh, former poet laureate. Or, yeah. or, is that would, or would you be current to yeah. work? Oh, always, no, a po- a former. Yeah, former? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not no, not a poet laureate for always. No, yeah. And uh, and he's gonna think of he's gonna try and think of something about uh, bikes, a, a poem about bikes to do, or some kind of way to start it. You're listening to Bike Life Radio, yeah. KWNK, ninety-seven point seven FM. <laughs> and uh, are you guys all having a good time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent on the brew bike. Oh, okay. Oh, he's ready. He's He's ready. He's challenged me here. All right. So, all right. Here we go. Um, It's it's got to mention a bike in it, right? So here we go. Let's let's do this. Uh, Pan Pan Toja. Um. Yes. This is the universe. Holy shit. Holy shit indeed. Why aren't you with the potentialist right now, working on everything? Well, I'm hanging out on this giant bike-like thing. And I'm entertaining these people, and I'm trying to... I, you know what, man? I can't be in two pieces, places at once. Yes, you can. Okay, say way no more, home chase this place, the place, the place, with purple pleasure. Try to put a number, but it's too big to measure. Helping helpless fiends, and it brings me the leisure. Hey, way, go, way, go, way, go, ain't no way home, home. Bow the wind somehow, and he gone, daddy gone, daddy gone, daddy gone. Nothing solid, bone to bone, crush Cupid's wings. Swing from a ladder, hey, quick, go slick, go pound. Nothing matters, flatters, flaunts with specific rights. Hooks and crooks and nuns of plastic knives. I'm held against my thoughts, I'm held against my thoughts, and I'm holding, I'm rolling rhythm like drum smoke. Bow down, all you brilliant folk. Bees not and bloomers kicked out of sock drawers on arrows air supporting fancy fellows who just don't care so buyer be buyer be buyer beware bye bye birdie middle fingers in the air sparklers sprinklers spanking spears deathless listeners with bat like ears but ain't nothing being heard ain't nothing being heard ain't nothing being heard i'm loving sophisticated turkeys with stuffing i'm coming so close to the rest it ain't nothing come on come on come on come on plastic you can't have it this ain't my planet 
where them Dr. Kings and them Kennedys, French revolutionaries, Jesus, Muhammad, Malcolm X, Cesar Chavez, all them kids at Tenement Square, the hippies from the 60s with the long hair, Nelson Mandela, Thomas Jefferson, the Constitution, Lincoln, Howard Zinn, oh, Gandhi, where you been? Woo, cause I'm sick of these politics, ain't nobody gay. Whoop, whoop, here come the karma, please, to lock my mind away. Two parts, one hole, and I work for pay, and I still wind up broke at the end of the day. Now I'm racist. Cause half of me is privileged This child from the stars This child raised the village So why don't you tell me which part I should hate In this climate of change Is it already too late? See I love both of me the same I'm half brown I'm half a tour of Europe But I feel like an alien from a planet that got blew up Forced for this oil the elitist men threw up I'm living proof that we're all the same And if we all get to loving we can share a last name A most beautiful world full of mutts like me Speak from your guts like me Don't give a care like me Un libertad on si How do we share this? Let me see Let me see you Let me see you Let me see you Ow! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yes! I had a really uh Like my heart started to uh, stop Oh jeez, yeah. I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> Wow uh, and like have some uh, uh, adrenaline flowing. Yeah. And so what is this like to do poetry on a bike? This is really, really fun. I'm just, <laughs> I, I, would, I would just do this. I, wanna, I want this to be how I get around. <laughs> the brew bike shows up and then you get to, oh, you want to get on here, don't you? I don't know. I want oh. to find out what, this, what it is. <laughs> well, What's going um, on here? For, for a, a block or two more, I'm going to do some more poems. And um, we're switching out with um, performance, uh, uh, literary performance artists. Some of us are comedians and some of us are poets. And I can give you a ride on that pedicab over there. <laughs> you, want, you want that? Or do are you, you want free? Or can she ride here? Get on this thing. Let's do it. Get on it. Are you free or are you charged? Uh, it's free. Yeah, yeah. It's, free. it's oh part my of goodness. The thing. Thank you so much. Get on. Oh, wow, we, yes. we got one more. <laughs> it's so like you're excited. out fishing. Yeah. <laughs> With your bike, right? <laughs> yeah, you have to oh, perch yeah, really yeah. up high. Don't you? So yeah. Have you ever been on one of these before? No, never. This is so fun. I mean, do this. This, this is great, Reno. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. It is incredible that there's space on here for you to do this, too. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. They called me up and they're like, do you want to do something funny in uh, Nevada Humanities? I'm like, well, yeah. Uh-huh. Let's yeah. do that. And now, and now you're on the back of this yeah, bike. Yeah, now I'm on the back of this, uh, this uh, brew bike. What's so fun? Yeah, what do, you, do you have a, a bike story, like a personal bike story that like always sticks out in your mind? Yeah, I, I, the, kids, the kids from blocks around would gather to watch me epically wreck. So like I would hit the jumps with no regard for ever landing it or coming down. <laughs> like and so um I would just go maniac style on that um when I was young. I had a black BMX and um it would it would wind up in the shop every two weeks because I would just just go for it. But you were okay. I, oh yeah, no, I yeah, I'm like yeah, I'm I was like made a rubber bat. I think I would die right now if I did anything I did back then. <laughs> Pan Pantosia, uh, riding on a brew bike, uh, KWNK 97.7 FM, and uh, uh, so was that uh, like one of your first performances ever that you did, or had, were you doing performances long before that, or other things oh, too? Yeah, n- no, I got um, my first paid gig. I was in, I was the fat kid in Johnny Appleseed. I was ten, and they paid me fifty bucks a week to run out on stage and trip and say, "Hey, everybody, wait for me," which which made everybody laugh. And they like got addicted to like performing, you know. Wow. Yeah. Huh. And so, but then you turn. You have you turned everything into performance? Like you turned your bicycling into a performance, right? So yeah. Is like uh, everything you do is somehow a performance? I, man, the older I get, I feel that way. When I leave home, I'm just I'm like I'm just art. When I leave, I'm on, you know. Um. Yeah. Now you're making me. Now I'm like getting existential on my life. I'm like, oh my god, is my whole life is just a performance? I don't. Is anything real? <laughs> it's all real. <laughs> yes. That's. A, uh. So, do you ride a bike now? Uh, yeah. I've got. Uh, I've got uh, the 10 speed from 77. Uh, the Schwinn. <laughs> um, and when I get a chance, I ride that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. And so you're like going from A to B. You're not really like performing on it. No, 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 no. I'm not performing on the bikes yet. Not yet. I mean, not yet. Now you get, I mean, like, who knows? You might start. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe after this, you'll be like, I need to ride around and do poetry. You yeah. know, we have a, a bike with a microphone and a speaker on it. 
Oh yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And you call me later. <laughs> All right, Pan Pantoja, thank Good to you. See you man. Yes. Yeah, have fun. Yeah, that was cool to see you out and about. I didn't expect to see you on this thing no, I didn't. at all. <laughs> that was Pan Pantoja of the Potentialist Workshop and former poet laureate of Reno. How about we hear from another artist now, one who made something tangible on a bike? Here is Emma Lou Rass. Yes. And we're at home. <laughs> uh, you built an outhouse on a bicycle. I did. Yeah, and uh, so the guy who was just here serving us, he was like, well, when you got to go, you got to go, right? Yeah, so you were prepared, weren't you? I'm very prepared when I build the outhouse, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's more of a story to it than okay. that, isn't there? Okay. Right? Yeah. Or no? Or no? Yeah, is, that a whole, is that the whole story? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a funny thing. I, I like to use the bathroom all the time, uh, <laughs> and I love to bike, so kind of... It's you kinda can, you wanted to combine the two? <laughs> combine the two is oh, yeah. Actually, pretty cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> I I thought about it until now. I'm like, oh yeah, I always use the bathroom. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's and perfect. Did you have like a phone holder in the outhouse on the bicycle so you could, you know, check your phone easily or whatever? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I didn't have anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> so, uh, in reality, what uh, what happened? Like, it's not just your love of outhouses and bathrooms and bicycles that brought you to do this. Uh, there was a, an event, right? Event. I wanted to be part of this event. Um, I heard it's a very cool event, so like, all right, I want to do it. And then I asked some few friends, like uh, John G from Bike Night, and he said, "Are you down to like do this with me?" And he said, "Yeah." Like get in the bathroom with you? <laughs> what do you no, mean? No, no, <laughs> to like help me. Parts of the story help here. Me push, push the outhouse. Uh-huh. But they did ask me if they want to help out. If if I need help for building it but then I did it I was like oh I got it like you know I just like <laughs> just said you know maybe next time but you know I really wanted to do it on my own so yeah so, so to, to tell the other part of the story here because I think we're missing some of it is uh <laughs> still really early it's at 8 a.m. on a I'm Sunday still waking up yeah, yeah for sure uh, there's a an outhouse race in uh, Virginia City that they do annually <clears throat> and uh uh, you put the outhouse, you built the outhouse on a bicycle, right? On a tricycle. Tricycle, tricycle. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, what was your theme of your outhouse? I pretty much wanted to actually just do something with like the name that I've been trying to build. Like it's a business. Um, it's called the Garden of Shadows. I didn't think that, you know, you can like make something fun names with the outhouse. I just kind of like want to just do like my business name on it. So like people will know what Guardian of Shadow, but it's kind of actually sounded lame <laughs> after like be- <laughs> after being in the event, everybody has cool names and funny names. And I'm like, I should have just like done something fun. <laughs> yeah. So we would have, uh, you'd think that a bicycle would be really good for putting an outhouse on, right? I think it's good for lots of things, but uh, did it turn out uh, okay or what What happened? So with the bike, it's actually, it runs like we when they my pusher pushed the uh, outhouses it was actually really good but then we also found out that the lock in the bicycle is kind of stopping the wheels from moving and then we found out about it like at the very end of the race and that was one of the mistakes that we didn't like figure out until later until the judges one of the judges says hey like oh yeah your locks is kind of like like going on your wheels and it's like stopping it from moving and probably why everybody had a hard time pushing the uh, outhouse so that was one of the mistakes that we didn't know (laughs) that it could have been easier if we found out that the lock (laughs) should have been unlocked (laughs) oh oh, interesting yeah that's one of the first things that you check when you're checking over somebody's bike is you look at their brakes nobody nobody ever checked so like okay like we just like you gotta go and stuff like that i didn't even know gotta go yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) gotta go (laughs) emily rass uh (laughs) and uh it's yeah see your website again one more time spell Um, it it's e-m-m-a-l-o-u R-A-S dot com. Emilyras dot com. Excellent. We'll take a look. Emily Rass, builder of the outhouse on a bicycle. <laughs> One and only. <laughs> Thank you for, for being on Bike Life Radio. 
Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> That's it for Bike Life Radio. We record out in the world, never in a studio. Bike Life Radio is made possible by KWNK Studios in Reno, Nevada, owned and operated by the nonprofit Reno Bike Project on Grove Street. Bike Life Radio airs the first Sunday of every month in Reno at noon. We'll see you next month. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. Come on, I'll sit for it right there.